All right, saints, we thank God for you once again, and we're going to get ready to go into our lesson. I uh, see Aunt Eric just came in. So listen, um, we want to start today in uh, Deuteronomy, and the, the, our little subject that we, we're, we're using today for today's lesson is, are you one of God's people? Okay, and that's, that's what I want you to think about. The scripture says, save yourself. It also says that we are to examine ourselves in the word to make sure that we're in the word. And keep this in mind, saints of God. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Saints of God, that's what we want to make sure that we're doing and that we're allowing God to uh, 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 live this because the Lord is the one that's living the righteousness in us. We're going to get credit for it, but we got to let him do what only he can do, and that is present us blameless when we go, when he comes. So we want you to understand that we have to do it for ourselves. And you know what? We, we have a problem sometimes looking around at other so-called saints. Ah, you save yourself. You know, let the let the mother people be with it. Look, uh, Paul said, look, uh, my, pr my prayer and heart's desire for Israel is that they might be saved, having a form of godliness but denying the power, okay? And the Lord also spoke about those having a zeal, but not according to knowledge. You save yourself, saints. That's what I'm telling you now. You save yourself. All right, let's go. We're going to start in Deuteronomy. And the point is, we want to understand that we belong to the Lord, okay? And belonging to the Lord, we are in him and he is in us. And the point we want to make, too, is... If we are in him, then we're going to do exactly what he's calling for us to do, the way he's calling for us to do it. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Because, uh, look, we are his property. I believe Minister King in, in uh, one of the lessons Wednesday or, or Sunday mentioned the potter and the clay, you know, and the, 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 the potter. He, he's the one that's forming and making and molding and shaping the, the clay to, 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 to make it what he wants it to be, the way he wants it to be. And that's the way we are in, in Christ Jesus. The Lord is making us. And you know what? We have a problem in the flesh trying to live a spiritual life. So we need a God to bring to our attention the things that he that still needs work. Okay? So he's the one that's molding and shaping us. That's why we have some circumstances that come in our lives. Tests and trials come in, into our lives because we need to know where we are in Christ Jesus, okay? So if I never get tested, if I never get tried, I won't know that God is able to do anything. So the Lord is the one that's molding and shaping. And we want to make sure that what he's telling us to do and the things that, that he wants us to give up and the things that he wants us to come to is, is where we've got to start focusing. And I thank uh, uh, the Lord again for the young minister mentioning that uh, in this new year, uh, uh, he's going to stop complaining, I believe is what his, what his concern was. Because with, if, if, there, if that was a problem, if that was a stronghold, we want to shake those things. Whatever it is, say, we want to shake them. Okay, and I'm just going to start reading some things and, what, and we'll stop periodically just to talk about some things. But I want you to hear what the scripture is saying here. So we're in Deuteronomy chapter 6, and I just want to read uh, verse 5. Okay, that's all, uh, 4 and 5. And it says here, uh, uh, Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. I think we did this not too long ago, but here's what I want you to hear. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Saints of God, that is a requirement. That is a requirement. And if we love the Lord with all, okay, of our being, we're going, we're not going to be duped into doing anything that's going to be outside of God's will. Um, I remember Elder was teaching us years ago that uh, there are a lot of things that seem right, okay, but when we have the spirit of God in us, working in us, the, the, some of the things that we hear and see just won't settle. I mean, they may sound close to being right, but they just won't settle. And that's why we need to have Christ 100% working in us. 
so that we don't get fooled into believing that this is okay or that's okay when it really is not okay because if it's spelled out in the word of God, then that's exactly the way we have to do it. And once again, and, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might, okay? That's it. That's how we have to love him. And that's how we have to give ourselves to him, okay? Because he is the whole of what we are. He is the life that's in us. He is the heal. Look, I was at the doctor's office with my wife uh, yesterday, and I just happened to look up on the chart, and it had a, 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 a it, gave, it was giving you information about certain body parts, but it was talking mainly about the brain. And it was saying that within the body, within our bodies, there is enough, what do they say? Uh, 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 there was enough nerves and neurons. Okay, I don't know all the uh, medical terms, but he said it was enough in the in one person's body. If you could, if you could stretch them from end to end, they would go around the world. One body now, you could wrap around the world more than once. I forget how many times, but if it goes once, that's good. You know what I'm saying? But why? I mean, why are you saying this, preacher? Because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. There is no way we could figure out what God did to make us. And we have no clue how, how meticulously we are made. And we owe this to, to the Lord. Uh, my wife is still dealing with whatever this is that came on her. We still don't get it. We don't know exactly what it is. Um, Brother Darren is, is, is going through his, uh, Sister Trudy has been through hers, and we all have something that we're going through. But saints of God, it's the body that God has put us in that is fighting against these things that's trying to take us out. And so we owe God everything. It should not be hard for us to love him with all of our heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. It should not be hard because without him, we're going back to the dust. And if we go back to the dust and our spirit and soul is not in Christ Jesus, that's going to be destroyed and going to the lake of fire. This man, Jesus, deserves everything, saints. I'm telling you, he just deserves all of our attention. All right, let me go to the next one, 43, Isaiah 43. This is my wife's favorite verse of scripture. Isaiah 43. And I want you to hear this now, and I want you to understand why this is important. Because God, you are special. And I'm telling you, the Satan has absolutely no right to anything about us. I mean, we are special in God, especially because we've accepted the salvation that was offered up through Christ's blood. Huh? And look, God, he loves the sinner, but he, 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 he can't deal with the sin. So he loves the sinner too. And that's why he's waiting. That's why it's been 2,000 years and more. He's been waiting for people to turn and come to him. So that's why it's very important to say God. We give him everything. Give it to him. Hey, what, what do we have to lose if we give our life to Christ? What is it that we have to lose? Absolutely nothing. You gain everything. Again, I mean, look, I'll be quoting Minister King. <laughs> he said, look, we ain't got no place to go but up if we stay in the Lord. Okay, let's go to Isaiah 43. So we won't be here long. I'm just leaving these, leaving these scriptures with you. I want you to read them. I want you to meditate on these things. Give these things some thought. Okay, here we go. Uh, I got them. Isaiah 43, and I'm going to begin reading at verse 1. And I'm just going to go a little ways. I want you to hear what's going on here. Okay, Isaiah 43, 1. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Listen, listen. Israel was not a nation. Israel, they were uh, Abraham and his dad. They were uh, Gentiles, but God took him and, uh, and made him a people out of a people. That's who we are, saints of God. We are we are a a people that has been recreated, and we're in God. We're in Him right now. So look. That's what he's saying here. Uh, 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 but but now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not. That's what he's saying. For I have redeemed thee. Huh? We belong to the Lord. Listen. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Okay. That's what I want you to hear. 
we belong to God. And he said, thou art mine. And, they, and the reason we asked the question up here, uh, uh, the little question is, are you one of God's people? That's going to that's going to make sense before we finish, because God's people will do God's will. God's people will do what God wants them to do. You know, it's just like you know, we're just kids. You know, spiritual kids. And you know, as we were kids growing up, and if we had a, a you know a, 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 a family head, you know, somebody training us the right way, we did everything they told us to do. Hey, listen, I look. I believed. Whatever my mom and dad said, I didn't care what they said. And one day we were, me and Diane and my dad was going, we were just in the woods and there was an old shack in the woods, right? And this old shack was, it was, it, it was broken down. There wasn't nobody living in it, but, it, but in the, in the, in the uh, shack, there was a picture, old, a faded picture of, uh, of an Indian. It was just an Indian chief. And my dad told me the story about how the Indians lived there. And he, he just made up this whole thing. And for years, <laughs> for years, I went to school and I, I, I was telling people about it. And we found an old spoon. That says, God, this was an old spoon, just like the spoons in my drawer upstairs. But it was old and all, all corroded and stuff. And daddy was telling us that that was a real Indian spoon. And I took that thing to school for show and tell because my dad said it and I believed it. And that's what I want us to do. That's how I want us to approach this word of God. If God said it, believe it, it is true. It is true. It is true. And we're just going to accept it because God said it, because we belong to him. Okay. We belong to him, but we got to stay in it. We have to stay with it. Let me read a little bit more. So just I'll, I'll just move on. But I just wanted you to hear these things because God is wanting us to know, look, I got this thing under control. I Look, you're mine and I'm going to take care of you and you don't have, you have absolutely nothing to fear over here. So again, let me just read it again. But now, but now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. And listen to this when trouble comes. Listen, saints. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When, uh, when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord, thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Now listen to this. Where else are you going to go to get this kind of attention? Where else are you going to go uh, to, to find somebody who can take care of you like this? No matter what comes, God's got a way of getting us through it. Uh, but we got to be in it, saints of God. That's what it is. that's what we're talking about here. We have to be his and let him be ours. And he's going to take care of everything. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's the truth of the All right, there's more in there, but I'm not going to go there. But uh, let's just run over here. Okay, now here, listen. Before I go there, I want to go to Romans. Romans 1, I mean, Romans 12 and 1. Now, these, these are familiar. You've heard all these, but I, I'm just, I'm trying to make a point. I want you to hear it, and I want you to take these things to heart, and I want you to make sure that whatever the Bible is asking us to do, we're doing it the Bible way. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Don't worry about how they do what they're doing. God will deal with that. All right, 12 and 1, Romans 12 and 1. And then we're going to go back to Second Chronicles. But Romans 12 and 1, and we know this, this is very familiar. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. All right. That's what, he, that's it, that's it. That's it. Why? Because we belong to him. We're his property. He wants us to stay in him so that he can complete the work that he started in us. Huh? So we got to give him what he needs to work with. And what he needs to work with is us. So what are we doing? We're giving up our way of living before we came to Christ in order for him to teach us how to live a godly life in him. That's what this is about. And we can't do it if we don't give ourselves to him. Say, so God, we got to be committed to this thing. I, I, I said earlier, you know, 
Um, those are uh, he who hungers and thirsts after righteousness will be filled. Okay, <laughs> that's what we got to hunger and thirst after the Lord and His righteousness. And you got to really mean it. You got to be serious about it. And the Lord will show you what you need to do and what you need to stop doing. All right, let me read a little bit more. Um, it, listen to this one and two. Just listen to it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. That's number one, acceptable unto God, which lets us know that every praise, every offering is not acceptable unto God. It's got to be holy. It's got to be something that is being done in total righteousness with the right attitude, okay? And then it goes on to say, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service? Number two, and be not conformed to this world. Say to God, listen. Think about what you're doing when you dress yourself. Think about what you're doing when you prepare yourself to go out in public. Think about what you're doing when you're on the phone talking to somebody about somebody. Think about what you're doing. Think about what you're saying. Think about the, the, how you feel about people when you're confronted with people who offend you. Think about how, how it, 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 are we harboring anything in our heart or do we want to get even with anybody? Or are we forgiving everybody that comes at us? Uh, because God forgave you, uh, then we need to forgive other people. It's something to think about. Now. I'm just wondering, I'm just giving you some little things to think about. Because these little things are the little things that are going to cause a lot of people to be lost. Elder used to tell us it's not the big things. You know, we don't drink no more. We don't lie no more. We don't commit fornication and adultery no more. We don't play. We don't gamble anymore. We don't do all these things. We stop lying. Huh? But we've got these little things, these little tiny things. And the Bible says every idle word is going to be judged. The intent of our heart is going to be judged. So we got to clean that all up. And we can't do it without Jesus in us. And we can't do it without being in Jesus. Okay. So again, and be not conformed to this world. Everything about the world is opposed to everything about Christ. Okay. So that's why things don't fit. If we try to do the worldly things and the Christian thing, it just don't fit. How could two walk together except to be agreed? So we got to make sure that we give up the world. I mean, give it up, Saints of God. Give it up. The world is taking care of itself, but God is going to take care of us. Okay, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, listen, by the renewing of your mind. That's where it starts. You got to get a brand new mind. And I'm no longer doing the, going to do the things that I used to. I'm no longer going to entertain the things that I used to entertain. I'm now going to do what God is calling for me to do. And he spells it out. Uh, <laughs> he spells it out in the word. So we don't have, a, we don't, there's no, no uh, question as to what we should be doing or how we should be doing. Just do what's written in the Bible. Huh? Listen, say, obey. Because all this came on the world through disobedience. Adam disobeyed one command, and this mess that we're in right now. So what we have to do is Jesus came and wiped out what Adam did. So now we obey Jesus. We obeyed Adam <laughs> and followed Adam in the, in the iniquity that's in the world. But now we have salvation in Christ. So obey Jesus Christ. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay. That's what people need to see. People don't need to see people claiming to be saved, claiming to be children of God, and telling people about uh, 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 prosperity and uh, riches and God doesn't want you to be poor. Uh, we can't do it gossiping. Uh, we can't show, we, we, we're not going to demonstrate a, a godly life, gossiping about people, unforgiving, okay, lying, stealing, uh, taking things that don't belong to you. Listen, I, 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 I think this is all right, but I might have to reconsider this. I'm back to taking too many napkins out of Wawa. Oh, please. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, but I don't, I don't need all the napkins or not for me to blow my nose on. It's really self tissue. But again, this is something for me to think about. Is that going to send me to hell? I ain't sure, but I don't want to leave it there uh, and find out when I stand before the Lord. So again, that's a little seemingly a little silly thing, but it's 
I don't need four. I used to take six and seven in the bank, but I don't anymore. I've kind of reduced it down. Okay. So I just want you to hear these things, thanks for God. I want you to understand that if we are a child of God, if we are one of his people, we are to obey all of his commandments. Okay. Now, we're not living under the law now, but the righteousness that was in the law, we're required to live it. Okay. So that's why Jesus came, because we couldn't do it without him. So now we have him. Obey him. Just listen to him. Obey him. All right, let me do this. Uh, we're almost done. So you can, you, I'm going to send you back to read these things for yourself and spend a little time with the Lord in these scriptures. But this is what God has given me today to leave with you so that you can have something to work with. Uh, let's go over to uh, James, fourth chapter of St. James, real quick. And then we're going to go back to Chronicles, and we're going to see why this question is being asked today. Okay, let's do James 4 and verse 4. And I'm just going to read. Uh, we just had these, but I'm just, the Lord said do it, so we're doing it. Let's do, I'm going to read down to verse 4. It's, you've heard it all, but here we go. James 1, I'm James 4, verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members. And we just talked about that. It's in the body. It's in this uh, carnal sin. It's, it's the carnal nature. Uh, that's why we have to present our bodies a living sacrifice. So we got to die to the the, the, the the nature of the flesh and begin to exercise uh, God's will through the renewing of our mind. That's what he's talking about. We got to give and start thinking differently. And we can't do that. But listen, God will give you the right thing to do. But now we have to obey him and do that. <laughs> that's what that's what we're dealing with here. Okay. It says, ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Listen to the fourth verse. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. This is spiritual now. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is the enmity with is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Okay. Now listen, if we're guilty in one point, the Bible says we're guilty in all. That's why we have to come completely out of the world in our thinking and in our practices. Just come out of the world. Don't assume anything is all right. Run this thing by God through the word and see if it's all right. And God will let you know, yep, this is okay. No, this is not. And we want to stay with the yay uh, so that we don't get caught with the nay. Okay. So again, it says here, fourth verse, ye adulterers, spiritual adulterers, and adulteresses. That's for the men and the women going against God's word, serving other gods. Anything that is being put before the Lord is a God to you. The adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. It means it's opposed to God. And it says here, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. It's not saying will be, it is. And when you commit a wrong and you commit it, and you when you do it, you've done it against the Lord, okay? So what you have to do, God said, okay, I, look, I know it, I know that's in you to do, but I've given you an opportunity to clean it up. And what is that? You repent and turn from it. When you do it, I'm going to let you know that it's wrong. And when, you, and when you realize that I know that it's wrong and you know that I know that it's wrong, then you're going to turn from it and not do it anymore. Okay? And then here's the deal. Within your heart and in your mind, okay, you don't want to serve sin. Okay? And God knows that because the Paul said, look, with my mind, uh, 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 I serve the Lord, but in, in my flesh, I serve sin. He said, because I found this law that when I want to do good, sin is present. And that's the way it's going to be with you and me from now until the Lord comes to get the church. But you have to have a mindset to want to do God's will. And when you find yourself doing something wrong, it's going to hurt you and cut you to your heart. And you're going to want to get back in the right standard with God. You're not going to just settle with it, you know, oh, well, I did it, you know, it's all right. Well, they deserved it. No, you didn't deserve, you, did, you deserved it. You didn't deserve salvation. 
So people need to be forgiven and you need to learn to be the one to forgive them. Because if we don't, then we can't be forgiven. It's God's word. That's right. It's just it's just that. It's God's word. All right. Uh, we did that. Okay, now we're gonna we're closing out now. I want you to go to uh, to Second Chronicles. And you probably know where we're going already, but I want you to go there. We're gonna hear it. We're gonna read a little bit. Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter. This is when Solomon had dedicated the temple. He had finished the temple. He had finished his house. Everything was just the way God had, had intended for him to, to build it. And everything was done just the way God wanted it to be done. And Solomon prayed this prayer to God and asked the Lord to, 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 to remember the saints. To remember that he, and you'll, you'll, you'll see it when we go through here. I'm not going to read Solomon's prayer, but I'm just going to read uh, God's answer to Solomon's prayer because it'll cover what Solomon was asking. But again, saints of God, this is where I want us to be tonight. I want us to be there. If we are God's people, then we have to conduct ourselves the way God intends for us to conduct ourselves, both spiritually and naturally, because what we do spiritually is going to reflect what's going on. I mean, excuse me, what we do naturally is what's going to reflect what's going on spiritually. Okay, so that's why you know uh, we 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 uh, we were talking about, and I won't get into that. It's it's it's, it's, it's something, but it's not not now. Okay, we're we'll going to this lesson. All right, here we go. Now this is Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, Second Chronicles. Solomon offers a prayer and a sacrifice to the Lord. And the Lord answered his prayer. And we're going to start reading here in the 12th verse, chapter 7, verse 12. And it says here, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. Listen. He said, 13th verse, If I shut up heaven and there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Listen, now, Central God, listen, why would this happen to God's people? Because God's people stop serving God, okay? So this is there's consequences to sin. But right now, we have an opportunity to get what's wrong right. And that's why the Lord is saying, and again, I think it's interesting or important to understand that this this appeal this if we well you go you can read all of it but if you read Solomon's prayer Solomon pointed out the fact that men are just their sinners they're going to sin but if they turn it, what, what would you would you hear if they turn and God has responded to this because He knows the weakness that's in the flesh God knows the weakness that's in our flesh we know the weakness that's in our flesh but saints of God don't let that dominate your life. Let that sin nature know that, no, not anymore, buddy. You're going to have to get up out of here. I know that this is wrong, and I'm not going to do it anymore. All right? If I get tricked up and I get and I fall into it again, every time I stumble, I can ask God to forgive me every time. And you know what will happen? Every time you ask for forgiveness, he forgives you every time. And what happens with that sin? It goes into the sea of forgetfulness. Well, I, I did the same thing over again. Yeah, you got tricked again. That's because you're weak. But you got to go and give it back to the Lord. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, saints of God. And God is going to forgive you and it's going to treat you, treat you like it never happened. You're sanctified and you're justified in Christ. All right, now here we go. 12, I did 12. All right, now. All right, it says, if I shut up heaven, 13. And there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Here, if my people, this is what God is talking about, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Good God Almighty, this is my job. Huh? <laughs> this is my job. If I'm in Christ and I've made a mess, I got to humble myself. Okay? And look, you can talk about me all you want. But you're going to have to humble yourself for talking about me. Uh, so it, I got to save myself and you have to save yourself. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, listen, and seek my face 
and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin huh? and will heal their land. Good gracious saints of God, this is, listen, this has been going on since time began. Huh? It's good versus evil. Good versus evil. Okay? And that's where we are right now. And we are, we, look, Jesus Christ has come and taken care of the sin nature in the flesh, but we have to make sure that we're in Christ in order for, to allow him to continue to take care of the sin nature that's in the flesh. So again, the Lord is saying, look, if, my, if they turn, yeah, I know they're going to stumble and fall. I know it. And, that, and, and Solomon knew it too. That Solomon was a wise man. We, we learned that the other day in the study. That Solomon was a wise man. And he asked for wisdom. He didn't ask for anything, a, a whole lot of stuff. Uh, he just wanted to give me wisdom and understanding to lead this so great a people. That's what I want. That's what he was asking for. And Solomon knew that man was going to stumble and fall. And he knew that God was going to have to be the one to recover him. And again, let me read it again. If my people, which are called by my name, we just heard over there that thou art mine. Huh? As he said, I have redeemed thee. That's what God was talking about in Isaiah. Okay. And he said, uh, uh, and shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now listen, now mine eyes are open and my ears are attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. God said, yeah, I heard you. Huh? I paid, I'm paying attention to what you asked me, Solomon, and I want you to understand, I'm gonna do this thing. He says, for now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Essential God, listen, God is saying, in this temple that Solomon just built, I'm gonna be in there forever. When you pray to this temple, I'm going to be there to answer your prayer. But listen, listen, huh? we are now the temple of the living God. Do you understand what I'm saying? God is in you and he's in me. If you've been, if you've repented and you've been water baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and been filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance, you are in Christ and Christ is in you. So this is what he's saying. He's saying, for now have I chosen and sanctified this house. Huh? We have this treasure in earthen vessels, okay? So that's true. That, this treasure is living God in us, okay? So it says here that my name may be there forever. The name of the Lord is in us. And you, look, it's just in there, okay? I, mean, I know you think sometimes, well, why am I going through this? Why this? Why that? You're going through that because that's a part of what make, that's a part of what life is here on earth. But God is in there taking care of all those things. And my eyes and my heart shall be per, uh, there perpetually. And as for thee, now I don't want to read that. Let me go down to 19 verse. Okay, 19 verse. Then we close it out. It says here, uh, oh, oh, bear with me. I want to read 12. Uh, I'm going to read, uh, read 14 through 16, and then I'm going to jump down to 19 so you can hear it together. It says here, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and that and and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. Okay, listen to the 19th verse. But if ye turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them. And this house, which I have sanctified for my name, will I cast out of my sight and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among the nations, among all nations. Saints of God, listen to this. This whole thing is conditional. God said, I'm going to do my part. If you just do your part, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. And the blessings are going to take you. My thoughts towards you are pleasant thoughts. 
I'm going to bring you to an expected end if you stay the course. But you got to stay the course. We just heard that not too long ago. Just got to stay the course. Don't give up. You're in this thing now. You're in it now. Don't let that devil steal what God has prepared for you. Number one, he's given us uh, abundant life, okay? He's given us a, 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 a peace that just doesn't make sense with the world as wicked as it is and the fear factor is being uh, 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 spread throughout the world, not just the United States, throughout the world. Uh, but the, the saints of God don't have it to fear. We don't have it to worry because we got Christ. If we die in Christ, happy are we. But if we if we stay down here, God's going to see to it that we get what we need while we're down here. So th look, and he's saying here, but if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you and shall go and serve other gods and worship them. Now these other gods can be anything, anything that is more important than the Lord, okay? So you gotta be careful. You know, you're not, you're not worshiping sticks and stones and, and images, you know, but you may be, may be something, your job, your husband, your children, something, but just don't make it more important than the Lord. 20th verse, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them and, and this house, which I have sanctified for my name, will I cast out of my sight and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. Now listen, this once saved, always saved, please don't fall for that thing. You got to work out this thing, saints of God, because listen to what the Bible says here. He says, look, then will I pluck up by the, uh, by the roots out of my land, which I have given them, and this house, listen, which I have sanctified for my name. Okay, the, the name. See, we bring him to an open shame. We're professing Christ and going out and acting like the world. Uh, uh, we look like the world. We talk like the world. We hang out like the world. Okay, it's, it, it, it means something, St. God. We are now the temple. He, he look, in, in the church house where we meet, uh, it's not there. I mean, God is there because he's everywhere. But the church, when we meet, we are the church. Uh, we come together. The church is in us. Okay, that's why he said where two or three are gathered. You don't need a crowd. All you need is somebody to be in agreement with what's written in this book. Okay, and that's, the, that's where the Lord is. And again, I will cast you out of my sight and will make it a, I make it be a proverb and, and, and a, a proverb and a byword among all nations. And again, St. your God, if you if you were in Christ Jesus and you backslide and you, you know you bring the Lord's name to an open shame, uh, you know, look, certain people know that what's going on in churches now is is not right. They even know that. You know, even before they get saved, they know what a saved person is supposed to be like anyway but they can't live it. But when they see you acting like them and you in church carrying the Bible saying, hallelujah, you know, my God is good. This, you know, all those little churchy things that you do without the spirit, they know there's something wrong with that. That's a hypocrite. And God don't want no hypocrite. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. All right, let me finish up. And this house, which is high, shall be an astonishment to everyone that passes by it so that he shall say, why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and unto this house? Okay, and it shall be answered because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt and laid hold on other gods and worshiped them and served them. Therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them. And it was not his fault because he's a righteous judge. And he has to do righteously against sin, okay? So any time that we step out of God's will willfully, don't expect God to bless you. Don't expect a whole lot of good things to happen to you. Now, having said that, if you're going through something right now, you know, now or in the future, then you want to make sure that you take that problem, whatever it is, to the word of God. And if you find yourself in the word of God and you're still going through your little test and your trial, then you know that God is working something out for you, okay? But if you go into that word and find out that what you're doing is not lined up with that word, that calls for some serious repentance and turning away from it 
And if my people, uh, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, I'm going to take that wrong that they've done and I'm going to treat it just like they never did it. Okay. But you got to turn from it. If you commit it wrong, you got to turn from it. Okay. And if things aren't going right, just go in the book. If you found, if you're in the word, all right. Because the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers us out of them all. So you're coming out if you're in Christ. Huh? You're coming out. If you're in Jesus Christ, you're coming out of whatever circumstance you're going through. If he don't take you out of the world, he's going to bring you out of that circumstance. It's just the Bible. And we can't do nothing with it. We can't change it. If we live a godly life, we cannot stop any of what God has for us. And if we live an ungodly life, we cannot prevent any of what God is going to do for us. He said, I set before you this day life and death. Okay. I used to say, He set before you this day uh, two doors. <laughs> Behind the one door is life, one high, the other door is death. And somebody corrected me on that. But it's the same principle. Two things are out there life or death. Okay. So we choose. And what do we have? If we choose life, that's Christ, huh? as, as, as Jesus Christ. Huh? But if we choose death, that's outside of Christ. Okay. So we make the decision. All right, saints, that's it. That's all I have tonight. I wanted you to hear these, and I want you to take a minute on your time. You know, do it on your own time. Deuteronomy 6, Isaiah 43, 2 Chronicles 7, Romans 12, and James 4. And the verses you, you'll run across. Just read the whole, the whole chapter. And just, you know, just see what the Bible says. Amen.